And now, I want you to take a deep breath. And I just want to ask you gently, are you here? A lot of times, we're more between. We're either still where we came from, or we're thinking ahead to where we're going next. So I invite you today, in this hour, to be here. Look around at the beauty that surrounds you. Pay attention to the music, to the scripture lessons, to the prayers. And find yourself surrounded by a faithful congregation and in the loving presence of God. Whoever you are or wherever you are in life's journey, you're welcome in our worship this morning. Thank you. We thank those that are participating in this morning's service. Today's flowers are the beautiful poinsettias decorating the sanctuary for Christmas. And I personally would like to thank John and Sue Tiber, who worked so hard to decorate the church as well as so many other things in this sanctuary. It's lovely, and I know that it's very much appreciated. They both help the coordinate the food pantry and the holiday food drive with the pickups, along with Gail Fulop and many other volunteers. You're both amazing and loved. Thank you. Each Sunday, leading up to the celebration of the birth of Jesus, we reflect on a theme that centers us as we wait with eager expectation for the glory of God to be revealed. This Sunday, we center on joy. May we have a moment of silence to prepare for worship. Amen. spirit and join in singing our opening hymn, Joyful, Joyful, We Adore You, number 232.
Please join me in the responsive call to worship found in your order of worship. God has shown love among us. My friends, if God has so loved us, we also ought to love one another. For if we love one another, God dwells in us. Let, Let us, us worship, worship the, the Holy One, one and, and seek to live as, as we have been loved. loved. Let us pray together for peace. God, God of love and mercy, thank you for your great gift of your child, Jesus Christ, who fills us with all that we need. Merciful God, we are fully aware that not all your children are able to bask in joy or peace during this season. We pray for peace within all walls. Walls within our own homes, walls that surround each city and town. We pray that during this season of Advent, we may usher your promise of salvation into our lives and that we may share the good news of our Savior with others. We pray that the promise of your birth may be the promise that we live in and share at home at work, and at school. May we be moved to compassion and action in your name. We pray this in the powerful name of Jesus Christ. Amen. When the Lord comes, he will bring to light things now hidden and will disclose the purposes of the heart. Let us confess our sins. O oh, holy God, our Advent waiting is a confession. We wait for a Messiah because the proud are still powerful, the mighty are still exalted and hungry people stand unheard at the door. We wait for your incarnation in human form because we have not recognized you in our sister. We have not loved you in our brother. We have not served you in our neighbor. In the stillness of Advent, love and light, heal us and make us new through the good tidings of your presence in our lives. Amen. And let us pause for a moment of silent and personal confession. We do not wait for forgiveness. It is a promise kept for every day, a light shining in every darkness, the breath under any song of justice. We are forgiven, and let us all say, thanks be to God. Let us continue together in prayer, offering the words our Lord has given us to pray. Our, our Father, Father, who Lord art in heaven, heaven hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, 
Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Today is the third Sunday of Advent, the Sunday of joy. Mary was not afraid, but joyful because the Lord was with her. The angels comforted the frightened shepherds out on the dark hillside with the joy of the good news. Because of our relationship with Christ, we can experience joy and peace. And Mary said, my soul magnifies the Lord and my spirit rejoices in God, my savior. And in the region there were shepherds out in the field, keeping watch over their flock by night. And an angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone round about them. And they were filled with fear. And the angel said to them, Be not afraid, for behold, I bring you good news of great joy, which will come to all people. The light of the prophets reminds us of the hope that God gives us on the way to Bethlehem. The light of the angels reminds us the peace God gives us in Jesus Christ. The, jo the light of the shepherds reminds us not to be afraid, but to be joyful on the way to Bethlehem. Please join us in, in prayer. Lord, Lord today, today we rejoice. rejoice. We rejoice because, because our Lord and Savior, Savior, Jesus, Jesus is born in Bethlehem. Fill our hearts and our days with joy. joy. We, we rejoice that you are always with us. Always.
The first lesson this morning is taken from the book of the prophet Isaiah, reading from the 61st chapter, beginning at the first verse. The spirit of the Lord God is upon me because the Lord has anointed me. He has sent me to bring good news to the oppressed, to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives and release to the prisoners, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor and the day of vengeance of our God, to comfort all who mourn, to provide for those who mourn in Zion, to give them a garland instead of ashes, the oil of gladness instead of mourning, the mantle of praise instead of a faint spirit. They will be called oaks of righteousness, the planting of the Lord to display his glory. They shall build up the ancient ruins. They shall rise up the former devastations. They shall repair the ruined cities, the devastations of many generations. For I, the Lord, love justice. I hate robbery and wrongdoing. I will faithfully give them their recompense, and I will make an everlasting covenant with them. Their descendants shall be known among the nations and their offspring among the peoples. All who see them shall acknowledge that they are a people whom the Lord has blessed. I will greatly rejoice in the Lord. My whole being shall exalt in my God, for he has clothed me with garments of salvation. He has covered me with the robe of righteousness. As a bridegroom decks himself with a garland and as a bride adorns herself with her jewels, for as the earth brings forth its shoots, And as a garden causes what is sown in it to spring up, so the Lord God will cause righteousness and praise to spring up before all the nations. Here ends the reading. Thanks Thanks be be to God. God. I invite you to rise in body or spirit and join in singing our hymn, which is Herald Sound the Note of Gladness, number 28. The second lesson this morning is taken from Paul's first chapter to the Thessalonians, reading from the fifth chapter, beginning at the 16th verse. Rejoice always, pray without ceasing, 
Give thanks in all circumstances, for this is the will of God in Jesus Christ for you. Do not quench the spirit, do not despise prophecies, but test everything. Hold fast to what is good, abstain from every form of evil. May the God of peace himself sanctify you entirely, and may your spirit and soul and body be kept sound and blameless at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. The one who calls you is faithful, and he will do this. Here ends the reading. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God.
Let us pray. Holy God, we give you thanks for such beauty. For candlelight and greenery. For the stirring beauty of choir and violin and organ. Help us, O oh God, to hold on to beauty. To carry it, to savor it in all its preciousness, and to share it. Amen. So we are in the season of Advent, which is a time of anticipation and preparation. For the celebration of Christmas, the birth of Jesus Christ, and also a time to reflect on Christ's promised return. It's a time of special music, of decorations, lights, and greenery. And today is a special day in that special season. Notice the pink candle. Today we celebrate the Sunday of joy. Today is known as Gaudete Sunday. Gaudete is the Latin word for rejoice. And it is also the first word of the Roman Catholic Mass for this day, which, should you hear it in Latin, begins, Gaudete in Domino Semper, Iterum Dico Gaudete. From the passage... In the letter to the Philippians, in the fourth chapter, the seventh verse, which is the epistle reading for this Sunday in Advent, in year C, this is year D, so remember this next year. Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I say, rejoice. Joy is important in Advent. Because I would say it, along with love, is really the essence of Christmas, of its meaning, of its promise, of its celebration. Joy and love transfuse, or transform, I should say, the, the story of a birth at an awkward time in an uncomfortable place to the wonder of God's promise and intended blessing for all the world. We heard the passage from the prophet Isaiah describing the sensation of being filled with the Spirit of God. The Spirit of the Lord God is upon me because the Lord has anointed me, the prophet says. Anointed me to bring good news to those who are oppressed, to bind up the ones who are brokenhearted, proclaim liberty to the captives and release to the prisoners, to comfort all who mourn. Proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. If this sounds familiar, it's because you, remember, you may remember Jesus saying these words on the occasion when he stood up in the synagogue in his hometown and was given the scroll to read from, and it was this passage. A passage that talks about return from exile and restoration before God, about building up ancient ruins, raising up former devastations. A passage that talks about repairing ruined cities. 
Because, the prophet says, God loves justice. And God has made an everlasting covenant with the people. This is an interesting time to try to find our way to joy and hold on to it in this season. It's so easy to look at our screen or turn on the radio or watch what goes across the the flat screen or the TV at home and find so many reasons to be disappointed, despairing, overwhelmed, just tired and sad and maybe even bitter. But we're called to joy. To joy. The passage that we heard from Paul's letter, which is the first letter that he wrote, the oldest book in the New Testament, which he wrote to people in the church that he founded, saying to them, Rejoice always, not simply when it rises up energetically and needing no extra effort. Not simply when it's in tune with what's happening around us, but always. Always. The way we understand the angels rejoice in God's presence, singing all the time to God's glory. Pray without ceasing, Paul says, Pray all the time. Give thanks in all circumstances. All. Even the ones that we don't want to think about. Even the ones that come to mind immediately as this, this is what disproves everything that Paul is saying. This miserable time I can think about. You may remember that in March of this year, there was a court case in Utah. It was the culmination of seven years of courtroom drama and litigation between two people. One was a retired optometrist. The other was the actress Gwyneth Paltrow. They had had a collision on a ski slope in Utah seven years before. And the optometrist, whose name is Terry Sanderson, sued Gwyneth Paltrow. During the course of the seven years, he had lowered his claim from $3.1 million to $300,000. And during that time, Gwyneth Paltrow had countersued for $1 and attorney's fees. So on this particular day in March, the witnesses were called, their testimony was received, statements were made, both people took the stand. And when it was finished, Gwyneth Paltrow prevailed in the court case. It was over. Except for what Gwyneth Paltrow said as she left the courtroom. She said to Terry Sanderson, wish you well. Now, it's easy to think that, yeah, An actress is always aware of how everyone is seeing her and wants to set that up and and sort of tune that and manipulate it as much as possible. But the only way we know that Gwyneth Paltrow said this is because Terry Sanderson told people what she said. 
and, and bent over and spoke into his ear so only he could hear. And so after seven years of altercation and lawyers and wrangling, the final word was, wish you well. Sincerely spoken and sincerely received. Terry Sanderson reported that his response was, thank you, dear. So what about this challenge to rejoice always, to, to carry joy within us always, savoring it, attending to it, sharing it? You can tell right away that it takes some kind of discipline, some kind of intention, and quite likely... It depends on more strength and faith and hope than we have ourselves, at least sometimes. I thought about this passage from Isaiah. The description of repairing ruined cities, devastations of many generations and I thought about Israel and the Gaza Strip and a line somewhere between them and the sense in which the people on both sides of that line can reach back to an experience of exile Both sides carry deep sadness and devastation about persecution to the point of non-existence. And I was struck yesterday, on Friday, as I was listening for some news about all of this, the latest things that had happened, and the person who was assigned to report said she wasn't really able to offer a lot of response from the faithful in Israel because it was the Sabbath. So they hadn't been listening to their screens. They hadn't been answering their phone. They weren't available for comment because it was a time for worship, because it was a time for rest and devotion, reaching back to God's rest at the end of the work of creation. And so there was no way for the news to happen. Because worship and observance and prayer came first. Rejoice always, pray without ceasing, give thanks in all circumstances. It, it, sounds, it sounds like it could be just a caricature of faith, just a list of impossible things that could be thrown down before us with the challenge of really? But that passage goes on to say do not quench the spirit and it mentions the God of peace the God of peace keeping us and our spirits, souls and bodies sound and blameless and safe. The prophet's passage ends with the prophet responding to God confident and certain of being blessed 
The prophet says, God has clothed me in garments of salvation, covered me with a robe of righteousness. A faithful relationship, a response to an invitation into covenant that is not hesitant, that is not qualified or limited, but is rather an experience of of deep and boundless promises of love and new life and strength and hope precisely in the midst of the most desperate, the most agonizing, the most desperate circumstances. I think it's an important invitation to take the pink candle and its light, to take the music, to take the invitation of constant prayer, perpetual rejoicing into the world. Take it as a challenge. And when you need to, grab some strength and inspiration from faithful people around you. And do not underestimate or belittle the difference that that will make. In all the places that we pass through where there's discord or disappointment or worry or fear or anxiety or anger or conflict, imagine procession of perpetual rejoicing passing through the midst. I think if we look for it, we can see it in in the light in the eyes, in the gentleness of the speech, in the compassion and the hospitality of the invitation that is offered. It's not impossible because nothing is impossible with God. And so hold on to this Sunday of joy and take it with you through this week. Amen. And now let us shift in our worship to prayer. To the words, the thoughts, the hopes, the gratitudes, the yearnings we've brought with us this morning. We give thanks once again for the beauty and the quiet and the gathered faithfulness in which we worship. We lift up prayers for those named in our order of worship, for Marlene Bolaño and Meg Adams, David Gould and Joyce Bolaño, Linda Rankin, Shirley Ryan, Sarah, and Linda Shannon. We wish a happy birthday in the coming week to Cynthia Borma Campos, Carol Amico, Damon Quinn, Rich Gallagher, and Sadie Baldino. We want to offer prayers for those among our acquaintances and our families who are struggling with chronic illness. And so we lift up prayers for Maria and for Misty, for Nolan and Marsha, for Chris and Janet and Roy for Joseph Basivius and Elaine Smith, for Jackie and Annie, for Karen and Carlene and Rich and Jake. Steve Peterson wanted all of us to know that Mabel Peterson's hip replacement surgery went well on Friday and she is home uh, recovering 
eager that glad that her Christmas preparations were done and Steve admitted that in his caring role he may need prayers as much as she does. <laughs> I invite our prayers for Lorraine Morehouse who is in the healthcare center at um, Masonic Care. For Herb Schneider who was also there getting some physical th therapy and for both Herb and Ann as they prepare to move to Elam Park on Wednesday of this week. I also ask that we lift up in our prayers Audrey Tilly, who is in the healthcare center at Masonic Care recovering uh, from a broken arm. Let's begin our prayer in silence. O oh God of holiness and love, we thank you for this opportunity to be quiet and to open our hearts in trust and hope that you will bring the healing and the strength and the forgiveness that you promise. We thank you that we are able to offer our prayers in the company of the faithful, drawing on their strength and their faith when our own seems perhaps insufficient. We give thanks for the beauty and the sustaining wonder of our worship, music and prayer and song, and for the wonder and the promise of this season. Help us to find quiet moments and places where we can step out of the maelstrom, out of the whirlwind that carries us through our hours and our days in order to be quiet and pay attention, to look for light in the midst of the darkness, to hear the song that goes on always, the song of the angels. To pick up once again our perpetual prayer and to trust that when we falter, when we feel lost, when we feel overwhelmed and worried and too tired, that your spirit will speak up and take up the prayer for us and bring us strength and hope once more. Hear all of our prayers, O oh God, the ones we speak and the ones which we simply hold up to you in silence, and grant to us a sufficient portion of your mercy and your love that we can continue this walk of discipleship, confident that you watch over us and that your Son, Jesus Christ, will lead us. We pray in his name. Amen. and laughter, hands and minds, curiosity and compassion. What an abundance of gifts we have. All these gifts are symbolized in our offering. Let us commit ourselves to ser in service as we worship God with our offering.
gifts to you, O God. Here is the work of our hands, and here is the love of our hearts. Bless them, accept them, and use them, we pray. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Now I invite you to share with me a greeting of peace and to take it with you into this week. May the peace of God and Jesus Christ be with you always. Our closing hymn is People Look East, number nine. God, who leads by a star, show us the way to Bethlehem. Lead us to the place where love is to be born in our lives. Give us signs along the road as we make our journey that we may follow in your way. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the deep peace of the Holy Spirit fill you and keep you in this Advent season. Amen. You may be seated. Thank you.